Finding good people to be a part of your team can be hard. Getting them onboarded and trained into their role on the dairy can be hard too. And keeping a good employee for the long haul, well, that can be even harder. And it's something that so many dairies struggle with. Well, over the past six months or so, I have sat down with some pretty incredible people in the dairy industry, the owners and managers of excellent dairies, some of the most sought after consultants who specialize in performance and people. And many of these are conversations you've been hearing right here on the Up Level Dairy Podcast. And you can certainly go back and listen to them all. But if you really want just some cliff notes, some common themes and take home points, that tie together several of the best conversations we have had right here on the topic of getting a new employee off to the best start so they can perform well for you, see a path for their own future by being a part of your team and be there for the long haul. That's where we're going today on the Up Level Dairy Podcast. This is the podcast for dairy farm owners, managers, and advisors who are committed to profitability, sustainability, and excellence. I'm Peggy Coffeen, and it's my mission to bring you the conversations that will uplevel your skill set and your mindset so you can be a top performer in the dairy farming business. And my goal is to make it easy for you by pulling together some powerful shares from seven recent guests, some of the industry's best owners, managers, and consultants. And we are going to walk through three critical phases of employee retention, starting with onboarding, then heading into uncovering an individual's potential, and finally, motivation, giving people a reason to stay. And I'm going to give you some high-value nuggets from these recent Uplevel Dairy guests so you can raise your own bar on employee retention. We are going to start at a very basic level, onboarding. And I'm not just talking about filling out paperwork and training a new milker. I'm talking about onboarding in a much broader sense. What's it like to set up a new employee for success but at a human level. And as Dr. Robert Hogevort from New Mexico State University Extension shared with us in episode 85, this is secret number one, unlocking the power of performance through simply listening to people's needs. The one thing that I tell producers is as they go around on their dairies and they look at their cows and they look at the feed and they look at how things are being done, first and foremost, the one thing that you have in common with your workers, you're both human be a human to the humans that work for you, right? And I know there's cultural barriers, there's language barriers, there's all kind of barriers that we have that we see a lot of our Hispanic workers that come here, and especially from Central America. And they they look up to management and, and they consider the owners at a whole different level. But what owners can do to break down some of those barriers, what owners can do to really meet those people and learn, learn from them, is meet them at the human level and say, how are you doing today? How are things going? What are some of your challenges, right? And that doesn't mean that you have, mean that you have to run out and fix everything, but have that one-on-one, -on -one. be a human to the humans that work for you. When you really take a step back and you look at the dairies that you work with that have the lowest turnover, the highest level of employee performance and are truly doing what we've been talking about in this conversation today, optimizing that individual employee and not leaving the money on the table of what they can bring to the business. A few things that they're, that they're doing differently and that they're doing right. You've talked about mm -hmm. really just spending time, even at the level, even at a high level of ownership, getting down on the ground Correct. next to people and having conversations and listening, truly listening. Absolutely. And some of the dairies that have done that have found out that, for example, one of the problems that, you know, they live very far out of town and it is a challenge for employees to get to the dairy. And they've realized for some dairies, it may be employee housing. For other dairies, it may be providing transportation for workers to get to the dairy to where they can leave the vehicle in town for for mom to take the kids to school and do the grocery shopping and things like that. For others, it may be providing meals on the dairy because they're too far out of town for people to bring a lunch and, and a healthy meal is something that we all need. Too often we see still workers going around on three Red Bulls a day. And, and that's, that is probably not sustainable for any human being. And so being able to provide those kind of things, and that may be different for every dairy, depending on where you're at, where you're located, what the challenges of your employees are. It could be um, English classes. I have heard that story being a success story in some dairies where they've been able to provide the resources 
to help them train with English or how to fill out paperwork for insurance or healthcare or taxes or those kind of things to that, that have really helped them to say, you know what, I find value working for a company, Dairy X, because they provide these kind of things where we have a need as a family. And so it may be different for every dairy, but again, those owners and managers found that out by listening, that those were some needs that they were able to recognize and say, okay, what would it take it for me to have a van that goes and picks up some of these guys? Or what would it take for me to be able to provide some of those meals? Maybe maybe it's contacting with a local burrito lady that comes by and, and, and does that, or maybe it's providing somebody that cooks there. Maybe, like I said, it's housing or, but it is, again, it's listening to employees, recognizing what their needs are. And maybe those are, you know, some simplified solutions. Maybe, maybe it's something else for your dairy. Simply helping meet the basics needs of people, even just nutritionally, as Robert shared, can go a long, long way. It's helping to remove a stressor or a worry on an employee's mind while they are at work. Employee retention secret number two comes from Ashley Pagel, HR manager at Pagel's Ponderosa Dairy, who shared how the diversity of what falls under human resources has become their business's greatest strength when it comes to employee retention from episode 97. And so when we talk about HR, what all falls under that umbrella here? Everything. (laughs) I call it a jack of all trades. I, you know, I do everything from onboarding. We have a payroll and benefits gal, so she handles most of that. But I do do those on Thursday and Friday, uh, help out with any assistance on that because she works Monday through Wednesday. We do rental. We have rentals. I've done rental inspections. I've mm-hmm. shown people how to do their laundry. <laughs> I, I, it's just word, you know, it, part of the job. Like I said, I, I do consider it a jack of all trades, even though we do have our set, you know, departments, we have a safety team, you know, the payroll and benefits, we have an accounting team, but we're still all responsible for a lot of those aspects. Yeah, and it sounds like you are, you're doing the compliance pieces of mm-hmm. human resources, but at the end of the day, you're taking care of people mm-hmm. and you're going above and beyond, doing the extra things so that you're not just providing a place for them to work, but you're showing a path to being successful in their lives outside of here. If it's as simple as a, a task that may seem simple to many of us, how to do your laundry, but have you seen where taking that time to do those things that go above and beyond to really take care of your team members, Mm -hmm. how have you seen that make a difference? I think that that is a very large factor in retention. Mm -hmm. I I mean, when people feel that they are valued as a person outside of a job and you take that time with them, I mean, that's invaluable. It's just, it's such a valuable piece of that person. Showing that you care for people by supporting them in their basic needs is foundational for building loyalty and trust. And this is where dairy owners and managers can take a step further, uncovering that individual's potential. However, you don't know if you don't ask. This brings us to employee retention secret number three, where regular employee reviews have been an up level for Schilling Dairy in Wisconsin. Bridget Schilling talked about this in episode 63. I do it every four months and just to sit down with them one-on-one. I usually ask them what they're grateful for or what do they value. We talk about what's one thing you can improve in your job role. What do you, what do you like about working at the dairy? I just try to find like four or five questions that we can just have a one-on-one conversation. And I always close with, what can I do differently as a leader? What support can I give you? So, I enjoy doing those and having that one-on-one. I don't do it monthly, I think, for right now. That could transition. Maybe I will end up doing it monthly right now. It seems every four months, this is what's working right now. The very first time we did this, each person, we had them show us on the map exactly where they lived and what part of the country. And several of our employees have come from the same part of Mexico. So just learning about their where they were, um, looking at pictures of that area, 
and there's one Veracruz I'm just looking at the pictures of the churches and the beauty that's there and I think that was one really interesting thing and having listening to them talk about what life was like at home and then their families listening to them talk about their families or their kids I pick one day I put it through the whatsapp and I will put a sign on the on the window right by the time clock and say this is what's coming up and then I have a sheet they sign up on and they will pick out their time that they want to come and I'm here from this time to this time and then they can schedule on their own I do about 15 minute intervals the first one I scheduled a little bit longer and we found that we didn't need that much time so then I went to 15 minute intervals. I will say sometimes we stick to 15 minutes and sometimes we don't. So that's another a little bit. I don't want to ever cut them short if there's things they want to talk about. Because as we know with anything, people don't just come to work and just have work to deal with. Regular reviews help to promote regular conversation. And to take that to the next level, we're tapping into episode 88 for employee retention secret number four. From Clint Alleg with Blue Sky Farms in Texas, who shared with us how open communication and a 90-day employee review process have become pivotal in determining if a new employee is a good culture fit, assessing their skill set, and also opening up dialogue for how they see themselves and their future with Blue Sky Farms. So how big of an opportunity is it for dairy managers to be able to really have a conversation with that individual to better understand what are their goals? What is it that satisfies them about the work that they do every day? How you can be a part of making their version of success possible, whether that is the desire to be promoted or the desire to just do what they do and be really good at it every day. I think just checking in with people on a one-to-one basis we have team meetings but sometimes people don't want to talk during those meetings so just catching guys one-on-one like hey how are you need anything from me that's when it kind of opens the door like hey actually i've been meaning to talk to you about like just open the door and just being visible to everyone as well that helps so what does that look like for you because now you're managing a couple of different sites but you know how important it is to be visible, as you said, and have that open door and do those those on the fly check ins. So how do you do that now in your role of managing three different sites? What does your typical day look like? It depends on which site I'm going to. But if, if I'm going to site one, first phone calls in the morning is with the site two and three managers. How's everything going? Everything working well today? Everybody make it in. It's a quick check-in in the morning. If I'm headed to the back of the calf ranch, as I'm passing by, just waves like, hey, everything good today? And most of the time they say, yep, everything's good. But just that little touch point as you go about your day really helps out. Going back to when you identify someone that you see the potential to be a leader and the steps that you take, this ties right in because as you talked about, it starts with the evaluation at your 90 day point, doing this check in on core values and how they are living out those core values, taking what they've shared, what you've seen and observed, and then really having the conversation by saying, okay, we have an opportunity for you to step in to a new role in the operation, a new to you role. And here's what it looks like. Here's why we're coming to you because we see that you demonstrate the core values and then asking asking, is this what you want? Is this what your desire is to advance in the position, to advance within the company? That vision for the future with your dairy is part of an even bigger picture of employee retention. And that leads us to secret number five from Elsie Gonzalez-Leach with Motiva Dairy Consulting, who shared in episode 63, this one question, the most progressive dairy owners and managers are asking their employees. This is what I have seen, that progressive dairy managers do. And when I say managers, either farm owners or dairy managers do. They sit down face to face 
and during the interview and throughout the process, they always ask this one question. What's your dream? What's your dream? What do you want to do with your life? All of them somehow. And you are going to see this in these interviews that I've been doing. It is surprising how these managers, they all have said the exact same thing. How do you see yourself in the future? What do you want to do? Why are you here? And that's where the magic happens. When they go, and sometimes this happens during the interview, because yes, he does interviews also. He sits down with these people, whether he's going to hire them or not, he doesn't know yet. But he asks them, what's your dream? What do you want? Why are you here? And most times they're going to talk about their family, their kids, the grandma. They have 10 cows back home and they want to buy 30 more, whatever it is. And then they start connecting with this person at that level. They talk about family and show me, do you have photos of your kids? Like the farmer intentionally ask, show me photos of your kids. Oh, I have six mm-hmm. kids. And I have, and then they start, that's, that's where the magic starts. But in it, it starts with asking them, what do they want? What are their goals? And having that communication that the farmer or the farm or the farm manager says, I want to make sure that I help you reach your goals. But I also need you to, to, to help me then reach the goals at the farms. Mm. And Peggy, I am not making that up. This is the type of people that I work with. This is the type of farmers that I work with. And this is why we get to do the amazing things we do. Because they truly care. I, and I mean it, they truly care about the people they work with. It takes, it takes a lot of intentionality, but when the person realizes that, hey, that guy, and usually if he's a Hispanic, you say, that white guy cares about me, wow. <laughs> Sometimes they say, no one ever asked me that. In my 15 years working in the United States, that's a whole game wow. changer. That does not mean it will be easy, because again, we don't know their background and what life experiences have shaped them. But we're getting there with that. Some of them want to be here. True story. Again, one of those guys. <laughs> that this makes me tear up because I had the meeting and I, I started this meeting. Tell me something you're proud of. And he said, my son is a doctor. And my, do- and my other son is a mechanic. And I was like, wow. And he said, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I paid for their school. She's a doctor, doctor. I said, I know. <laughs> like, look at that. But then how can we help them with that? Whatever it, whatever it is, and it will not be the, ch- the same for everyone. And this is where we truly begin to uncover an individual skill set, their potential, if they have the desire for more within your business. And what's even more powerful is, in, and what's even more powerful in employee retention, what matters most to them, their true drive, their core motivation, their why. But hey, in a competitive labor market, how do you take that information and then make your dairy or business the employer of choice where people want to come to work and want to stay for a very long time? Well, employee retention secret number six comes from episode 92 with dairyman Hans Netterin from Netterin Dairies in Idaho. And it's all about looking at ourselves, the way we treat others and the culture we are creating and then deciding if we are the ones who need to change. Especially in Idaho here, we have the housing boom going on out here. And Gary's compete with construction for the most part as far as labor. Well, I'm only about 10, 15 minutes from like the major cities here in Idaho, like Napa, Meridian, Boise, that, that whole metropolitan area. And so at the time, we were losing guys. Mm. Well, it, it's either just keep paying more which is not always the answer, right? Even though everybody should deserve a livable wage. But at the same time, it's either me adjust or, they, or they're going to adjust. And they're not going to adjust because they're just going to say, well, the hell with this. I'm going to go down the street to the construction. So I only had one option, and that was for me to change. I used to have some problems <laughs> like dealing with people. I felt like all the way should be only my way. It was my way or the highway. It was literally how I used to operate. And I mean, I used to fire guys for not waving at me. But then I read this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I actually listen to that book every August. And I have a quote later on from that book that I actually try to live by. So I I read that book and it was really because I was having turnover at that time. And I was 
and I was and honestly some of those guys I look back now and I'm like I kind of wish I had some of those guys back that I fired right but you can't change history but you can change the future so I was trying to learn how to be a better manager and there's several books I read from good to great how to win friends and influence people but it really changed how I viewed my men and women that worked for me I mean they were not they didn't they worked for me but they are my co-workers at the same time in our meetings when we always talk about the employees I always tell them they're professionals they're professionals in their arena right I mean you have professionals that are lawyers you have professionals that are accountants I mean big wigs that are quote professionals right well these men and women are actually professionals in their arena and so we encourage them to be that professional and so when we do talk I always say like you guys are the one the number one dairies in the nation and I do think that rings that that hits them in a way that's different than you know them just working on some random dairy where you know the milk quality is not that great the atmosphere is not that great and where everybody's not really playing on equal playing field when you tell somebody that they are number one they're going to live up to that and this all brings us to our final employee retention secret number seven creating a positive work environment built on trust genuine care and leading by example just as Juan quest just as Juan Casada, Director of Training and Development at Milk Source, shared with us in episode 74. Set your own example. This is the way you can motivate somebody. Because if you, if you keep saying respect, if you keep saying uh, try to show leadership to everyone, if you don't show that one, then you're lying to them. You're not going to do good to them or, or, or to yourself too. So actually, uh, you have to really care like i mentioned before they're going to find out if you really care about them i remember when they they, they proposed to me that to be a director of safety i said to the gym after i said yes i would like to become a director of safety and i would like to care about employees yes we have to follow osha rules we have to follow the state rules we have to follow the meal sources the rules too of course but we have to take care of the employees and the, the employees they have to know that everything we do is for them. So you really care, you, you have to show to them that you really care about them. As Juan stepped into the role of director of safety, his way of showing that he cared about the safety and well-being of employees was more than just checking a box on a protocol or distributing a safety vest. He wanted to demonstrate that genuine care to people. Like I say, they're going to find out if they're really if you really care. They're going to find out. The way you say it, the way you do, and not only that, the way you do the stuff too. Because if you don't follow the safety rules, the one I propose to do, if you don't follow the respect that I'm supposed to show, how they can follow me? How they can prove to them that this is true. Not only to, to show, but I really do it. You know, really do to show respect to them and to, sh to really show that everything we do is for them. Demonstrating that genuine care is something that others had done for Juan throughout his career and something he's so very grateful for, including the way that the Milk Source founding partners did it for him more than 25 years ago. I think I have to say thank you to a lot of people all over my, my career in the dairy industry. But over here I find out I can do what I love to do. I remember 25 years ago, we took a class about leadership, 25 years ago. Just Jim, John, John Boster, and me, and some, I think the two or three employees, we took a class on leadership. So 25 years ago, one of the questions they, said, they asked to me, said, Juan, what are, you, what are you doing five years? And I said, I would like to teach. I would like to teach my knowledge. Do you know how long it takes me? 10 years. Mm -hmm. But now, I, I do it right now. So sometimes it takes time, and that their Jim, Jan, and Todd, they know. I think they, in some way, they select each one of us in the right position. So actually, in some way, we de de we've been developed by them, because what they do, what they think, you know, be a, a true leaders, we will learn from them. If you say to me, I don't have time, does that mean 
are not important. And also, be, be, be careful. I'm not going to come back to you again. Because you say to me, you don't got time. And you say to me, you don't got time three or four times already. So we have to get time. And it's very important, believe me. Each one employee in, the, in every, every company is important. Every employee is important. So I always say to motivate, learn more. Because everything you learn, is going to stay with you. Everything you learn, is going to stay with you. So there you have it, straight from some of the best dairy owners, managers, and consultants in the business, the seven secrets to employee retention success. And quick recap, here they are once again. Retention secret number one. As Robert Hogwarts shared from the very beginning upon onboarding, start simply to listen for what a new employee needs to be successful, not just on the job, but outside of work too. Basic needs, maybe it's a healthy meal, a decent place to live, transportation. And employee retention secret number two for Ashley Pagel, expand the view of what human resources is doing to assist with these things, even if that means, as she shared, teaching people how to do their laundry. And employee retention secret number three, regular employee reviews. As Bridget Schilling talked about, and building upon that, Clint Alleg was secret number four, keeping those conversations open and asking employees with leadership potential what they see as their future with your dairy, evaluating if they're a culture fit and a fit for your core values and what they want for an advancement opportunity. Elsie gonzalez Leach takes it one step further to get to the core of an individual's motivation to work for you with secret number five. Ask people, what is your dream? And secret number six is the activator. It's where you take all of these previous steps that are external and then take a look in the mirror and ask yourself as an owner, as a manager, how must I change to be someone others want to work for and perform at their best every single day for a very long time, just as Hans Netteren discussed. And we round it out with secret number seven from Juan Casada. The final secret to employee retention is this, creating and maintaining a positive work environment built on respect and leading by example. I hope you've grabbed a few gold nuggets from these brilliant minds in the dairy business today, right here on the Up Level Dairy Podcast.